As chilling details about previous cases are revealed, investigators are on the verge of uncovering a terrible truth. The dawn of a new chapter in this dark story begins with a crucial breakthrough a mistake that will finally bring a nine-year murder to light. In this episode, we dive deeper into the investigation that reveals the extent of the horror and the relentless pursuit of justice that followed. Ronald Dominique, a serial killer, worried many people throughout the 90s and early 2000s. After a series of murders, police hoped to catch him before there were more victims. But it was not until May 30th, 1999, that he was arrested. Manuel Reed, 21 years old, his body was discovered in a trash can in Kenner City, Jefferson Parish. He had been raped and strangled and showed no signs of defense, but DNA was collected from the scene. Angel Mahaya, 34 years old, the eighth victim, whose body was found in June 1999, was also raped and strangled. His body was left in front of a trash can. Mitchell Johnson, 34 years old, Mitchell's body was found near where Oliver Bowie Lebank's body was discovered. He was also tied up raped and strangled. There were several witnesses who saw a suspicious man driving around the area where Mitchell disappeared. Police created a sketch of the suspect based on witness descriptions, but there were no real leads. They describe a white man of appearance in his mid-30s. He has chubby cheeks and a receding hairline. Police drew up a composite drawing of the suspect. But unfortunately, it doesn't produce any real clues. However, the sketch scares Ronald, causing him to leave the area. Ronald Dominique's crimes have not stopped, and the police continue to discover other unfortunate victims. On New Year's Eve 1999, 23-year-old Michael Vincent was lured into a car and murdered by Ronald. His body was found on January 1st, 2000. In October 2002, 20-year-old Kenneth Randolph Jr. was brutally attacked by Ronald and his body was found in a sugarcane field. Anoka Jones, 26 years old, was seduced by Ronald while riding a bicycle, then raped and murdered. His body was discovered a day later. Ronald apparently took a break from his killing spree for about two and a half years, but in October 2002, he resumed his killing spree. He uses his pizza delivery job to find new victims. Ronald Dominique, the infamous serial killer, continued his crime spree in the 2000s with many innocent victims. After losing his job at Carroll Production, he switched to working as an electricity meter reader making it easier for him to approach potential victims. In 2004, Larry Matthews' body was discovered in a pond. Although the initial cause of death was believed to be a drug overdose, there was evidence that he was murdered. In October 2004, the body of 21-year-old Michael Barnett was found in a storage unit. He had been raped and strangled and due to his state of decomposition, it was initially impossible to identify the victim. Leon Lorette, 22 years old, was one of the victims of serial killer Ronald Dominique. Leon's murder occurred in February 2005. Leon was found dead in a bayou area, and his death was determined to be due to strangulation and rape. It is worth noting that Leon was interviewed by police during the investigation into the murder of Anoka Jones in October 2002, suggesting a connection between Dominique's victims. This incident not only shocked Leon's family and friends, 
but also raised concerns about community safety, especially for young men in the area. Leon's death was part of a string of crimes committed by Ronald Dominique, and it contributed to the police realizing that they were dealing with a serial killer. The loss of Leon Lorette is one of the pain endured by the families and friends of other victims, many of whom never had the chance to seek justice for those they lost. Ronald Dominique was questioned by police during the investigation of the Anoka Jones case in October 2002. This suggested that Dominique had become a suspect in murder cases involving multiple victims. Other cause. This interrogation is part of the police's efforts to find clues and solve the string of crimes that Dominique committed. Anoka Jones was one of the first victims in Dominique's crime spree and her death contributed to the police's realization that they were facing a serial killer. This information not only sheds light on the connections between the cases, but also emphasizes the importance of thorough investigations to protect the community. In April 2005, the bodies of August Watkins, 31, and Kurt Cunningham, 23, were discovered. Both victims were murdered in a similar manner to previous victims of serial killer Ronald Dominique. Their deaths, like other cases, included strangulation and signs of sexual assault. This discovery not only raised concerns in the community but also revealed a clear pattern in Dominique's criminal behavior. Alonzo Hogan, 28 years old, was one of the victims of Ronald Dominique the serial killer known by the nickname Bayou Strangler. Hogan's body was discovered in July 2005, located in a remote area of Louisiana. Wayne Smith, 17 years old, was the next victim in the crime spree of Ronald Dominique, the serial killer known as the Bayou Strangler. Smith's body was discovered in August 2005 in a remote area of Louisiana. Like many other victims, Wayne had also been raped and strangled, demonstrating Dominique's characteristic brutality and method of attack. Ronald Dominique has become a terrifying serial killer with increasingly shorter intervals between murders. At this time, many parishes in South Louisiana realized that they were facing a serial killer. The agencies began sharing information and comparing notes with the FBI getting involved and a task force formed to maintain information between agencies. However, the media did not report much about this incident. Several local news agencies tried to pass information about the incident to national news agencies but were refused. They believe this is a regional case and makes no sense to report. It is worth noting that Ronald killed 20 people becoming one of America's worst serial killers. Many people believe that the media has not paid attention to this case because the victims were mostly black men living in poverty and some had criminal records. If the victim had been middle or upper class white, the case might have attracted more attention from the media. In late August 2005, Hurricane Katrina devastated many cities in Southeast Louisiana this storm killed nearly 2,000 people and left behind terrible destruction. Although some parishes were not severely affected by the storm, Ronald Dominique took advantage of this time to continue his murderous activities. Less than a month after the storm hit, Dominique met 40-year-old Chris Dill. Chris's body was discovered in Assumption Parish with clear signs of brutality, he had been raped and strangled, similar to other victims of this serial killer. On November 5th, 2005, 21-year-old Nicholas Pelgrin was working at home when Ronald Dominique came to read the electric meter. According to Ronald, they had a conversation and made plans to meet to have sex. However, Nicholas's family did not believe this story. Nicholas' body was found four days after he disappeared, with many signs of violence, including head injuries. 
Nicholas' death further increased fear in the community as Dominique's crimes continued without being stopped. After Hurricane Katrina occurred, the situation in New Orleans became chaotic and in that context, Ronald Dominique continued his criminal activities. One of the lucky victims who escaped his hands was Ricky Wallace. When meeting Ronald, Ricky felt insecure and suspicious. He gets a strange and scary feeling from Ronald, who he knows is related to one of the previous victims. Ricky wonders if Ronald is the serial killer known as the Bio Strangler. When he saw Ronald acting strangely, like he was looking for something in the car, Ricky felt even more worried. He warned Ronald that if he continued that action, he would use a glass bottle to defend himself. After being released by Ronald, Ricky couldn't stop thinking about his horrifying experience. He started having nightmares about being tied up and feeling extremely scared. Finally, Ricky decided to share the story with his mother, who convinced him to report it to the police. When the police ran a name check on Ronald Dominique, they discovered that he had a conviction related to rape in 1996. The police decided to question Ronald about the murders. Ronald denied all accusations and said his actions were just fun and nothing dangerous. Although there was no convincing reason to arrest Ronald, the police still asked him if he agreed to provide a DNA sample. Surprisingly, Ronald agreed and said he had nothing to hide. This made the police even more suspicious of him. The DNA sample was sent to the lab, but it took 10 months for the results to come back. Meanwhile, the police monitored Ronald 24-7. They discovered murders happening around the area where Ronald lived, forming a clear pattern. Finally, DNA results showed that Ronald matched the hair found on the victim's body. Still, police were concerned that a good lawyer could argue that the DNA could have come from anyone in his family. Ronald Dominique has become the prime suspect in a series of murders, but gathering solid evidence is necessary to bring him to justice. The investigation continues with the hope that his victims will receive the justice they deserve. On October 15, 2006, despite strict police surveillance, Ronald Dominique committed his 23rd murder. This act not only showed the serial killer's recklessness, but also raised the stakes. Serious questions about the ability of law enforcement to prevent crimes. This incident has made the community confused and worried, as the murderer can still operate without being detected. The victim this time was Christopher Sutterfield, 27 years old, who was visiting friends. Just hours after Christopher disappeared, his body was found on the side of Highway 69 in Iberville Parish. The police quickly realized that they had missed an important opportunity to stop Ronald Dominic. Sutterfield's death not only sparked outrage in the community, but also caused investigators to reconsider their investigation methods, hoping to find clues to arrest the serial killer. This before there are more victims. On December 2, 2006, Ronald was finally arrested. His image shocked many people. Ronald looked very normal, weak, and even had to use a cane when moving. This makes it difficult for people to believe that he could be a serial killer. After his arrest, police questioned Ronald about the murder. They claimed they knew he was the killer and had DNA evidence that matched the victims. Initially, Ronald tried to deny all accusations, but gradually he began to crack and confessed. However, he blamed the victims, claiming that they had tried to attack him and that he had only killed them in self-defense. In Ronald's mind, he was completely justified in acting like that. Ronald describes how he approached his victim. He would strike up a conversation with them, and within five minutes he could determine if they were gay or straight. If he thinks they are gay, he will pay for sex. On the contrary, if he thinks they are straight, he will use an image of an attractive girl. 
actually an image of his niece, to lure them into a threesome. He also often promised his victims drugs or alcohol to lure them. Most of the murders occurred in Ronald's car. Once he has tied up his victim, he no longer has to worry about being overwhelmed. If he couldn't convince them, Ronald would use a tire iron iron or other blunt object to hit them on the head, causing them to lose consciousness and easily tie them up. Ronald confessed to all 23 murders, but the police decided to take a plea deal. They promised not to seek the death penalty if he cooperated and led them to each victim. Finally, Ronald agreed to plead guilty to eight murders for which the police had enough evidence to convict. The victims included Kenneth Randall, Michael Barnett, Leon Lorette, August Watkins, Kurt Cunningham, Alonzo Hogan, Crisville Wayne Smith, and Nicholas Pelgrin. On December 2, 2006, Ronald led investigators to each of the landfills where he had dumped his victims' bodies. As a result, Ronald was sentenced to eight consecutive life sentences and sent to Louisiana State Prison. Some victims' families were not satisfied with this agreement. They want Ronald to receive the death penalty for the crimes he committed. They believe that Ronald does not deserve to live in prison but should face harsher punishment for what he did. Ronald Dominique is still serving his sentence at Louisiana State Prison. His case shocked not only Louisiana but also throughout the United States. Many people can't believe that a serial killer could look so normal. The story of Ronald Dominique is a reminder of the darkness people can bury beneath a facade of normalcy. Ronald Dominique's case is a heartbreaking testament to the brutality that humans can commit, as well as the injustice in the way society treats victims. Dominique's victims weren't just names on a long list of murders. They were people with lives, dreams, and families. The fact that many of the victims were people living in difficult circumstances has caused this case to be forgotten, showing a bias in the way the media and society pay attention to the cases. Delays in investigations and information release have resulted in many families never receiving the justice they deserve. Furthermore, the ordinariness of Dominique, who on the surface seemed like a normal man, made the fear even deeper. This reminds us that crime can hide under layers that we cannot recognize. The story of Ronald Dominique is not only a case of serial murder, but also a warning to us about the darkness that can exist in the midst of everyday life. It calls on us to pay attention to those around us especially the vulnerable, and not let indifference obscure the voices of victims. We need to remember that behind every case is a life, and every life deserves to be listened to and respected. Remember to like, follow, and press the notification bell to stay updated on new dramatic and exciting cases. We will bring you thrilling stories, never before seen details and valuable lessons from the world of crime. Don't miss the opportunity to uncover dark mysteries and join us to learn more about the most shocking cases.